Should you move from Vim to NeoVim in 2021? Let's find out. All right, the first thing that we'll do here is take a look at the NeoVim website and try to take some of the technical content here and simplify it a bit in case you're new to Vim, new to NeoVim, new to the terminal, and try to make this a little bit easier for you and also go over why you may or may not want to switch over to NeoVim if you've been a Vim user for any period of time. And so if we take a look here, we can see that Jeff Greer here says that NeoVim is exactly what it claims to be. It fixes every issue I have with Vim. And then we have from Wolfie87, Lua for plugins and config. It's so good. I love it. I'm still in the process myself of moving from Vimal to Lua. I'm not fully married to Lua yet. I'm probably going full Lua. That's work in progress. That's uh, TBD. We'll see. And then, of course, here you have Bram, who is the inventor, creator, maintainer of Vim, saying that uh, NeoVim has a nice looking website. That's the one thing NeoVim did right. And I think that Bram's concerns were some that many longtime Vim users have. Those are down here under frequently asked questions. What is the current project status? Well, there's a stable release at 04. However, there are a lot of tutorials and YouTube videos, etc., showing some of the cool new hotness with the LSP and with Yank Post Text or whatever it is and some other cool stuff. And you're going to need 05. whatever in order to use that stuff. So you're going to want nightly. And I'll show you that in a minute. Now, one of the concerns I had about six months ago, uh, six months before this recording, was this question right here, which is, is NeoVim trying to turn Vim into an IDE? Because of course, if I wanted an IDE with Vim key bindings, I would just add the Vim emulator or the NeoVim backend to Visual Studio Code and go that route. I don't want Vim to take over my development workflow with a bunch of magic crap that keeps me from comprehending my code. And so I was a little concerned too. I'm no longer that concerned. I have slight concern, but I feel as though we're pretty safe and some of the more magical pieces are opt-in. And so you're okay there. Uh, another concern, of course, for people is will NeoVim deprecate VimScript or Vimal as I call it? They say no, Lou is built in and VimScript will always be supported. That seems to be true. A lot of people, including myself, have a hybrid approach. Some of my configs in VimScript and some of my config is in Lua. There's just no way that NeoVim could kill off VimScript. I mean, it's one of Vim's big selling points is that you can find Vim on any Linux operating system anywhere, not NeoVim yet. So it would be a problem if you're logging into remote servers and there's no NeoVim there because the operating system vendor does not ship it with NeoVim. Maybe one day they will and NeoVim will no longer be NeoVim. It'll just be Vim. For now, this is not a concern at all. And then which plugins does NeoVim support? It says most Vim plugins, that's true. You will find some plugins out there though that are using things that are only supported in NeoVim. The old favorites, you know, Fugitive and all the airline stuff work perfectly fine with NeoVim. There's no difference because NeoVim is just a fork of Vim. So everything should work. Most of the time, if a plugin author goes through, that's a possibility to get something cool out of NeoVim that's not in Vim. They'll put it in conditionally. You know, they'll check, you know, the plugin author will check, is this Vim? Then do this. If it's NeoVim, then use this cool thing. And you can usually opt in or out of these things. Let's go up and look at installing. So you can install the stable release for your operating system. That's perfectly fine. On Mac, you can use Brew if you want the latest stable. And if you want to get the head and have the bleeding edge awesomeness, whatever you happen to 
you know, see if you see a commit go in and get merged into master and you want that, then you can always get the head from brew and that'll give you the head of master. So see a commit go in, go for it. You also have the option of grabbing nightly. Now, if you want to do any of the cool things that you see right now in a lot of popular Twitch streams and YouTube videos, you know, like tree sitter and any of the LSP stuff, yank text post or yank post text or whatever it is, then you're definitely going to want nightly and you're going to need at least 050. And you can follow the instructions here for your operating system. And something very convenient, if you're not familiar with going through and setting up paths and doing all that and you just want to make it easy on yourself, you just showed up here and you want to try NeoVim, then there's a nice cask to use for brew. And so I'll show you that real quick here. So first you want to tap the cask like you would if you're not familiar with brew, then you just go ahead and tap based on the GitHub repository and uh, user. So JSON 0x43 homebrew NeoVim nightly. And then after you're done doing that, then you can go ahead, brew cask install NeoVim nightly. And then whenever you want the latest nightly you can do a reinstall you can see here that i also install the head uh, when i want something and you, know, you can just mess with this stuff to make it real easy on yourself just tap that cask and then install it and then reinstall as needed and you always get nightly you don't have to do anything you don't worry about paths or terminal things that uh, you may not be familiar with and you just want to learn vim or mess with neo vim you don't want to mess with this other stuff totally cool all right so use this cask if you want to it's very convenient don't let the eight stars dissuade you it's just I don't think many people know about this and it's also pretty simple to set up yourself but it's convenient it's nice thank you Jason one of the things that you're gonna want to do is just try out NeoVim you know you don't have to try to take all of your config and switch it over and try to figure this out make it very easy for you and so you can see here help nvim from vim so I'll just go here and I'll pull up a little C file here the C file is irrelevant right now but just something to take a look at we'll go ahead and do help in vim let's see and we want in vim from vim all right so the first thing you're going to want to do is create the init.vim file and yes you also now have the option of doing init.lua that's not fully baked yet we'll do another video on that later so create the init.vim file and then Go down and put this stuff in it. And all this is doing is telling NeoVim, hey, go pick up all the Vim runtime path stuff and source the Vim RC. Then all you have to do is, uh, what I do? Restart NVim. Pretty straightforward there. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like. It's just right here. It's just these three lines there and you just stick that in the init vim and that will pick up your vimrc so if you have a vimrc somewhere then you can have both of these and so you can migrate a little bit at a time you may just want to start saying okay from now on anything new is going to go in init vim and i'll keep everything old in vimrc and you can slowly but surely move things over and then you'll find things that are only going to work for NeoVim or what, however you want to do it. You can just slowly migrate. All right, so some of the things that you may have seen in some other videos and are looking to check out are the language server protocol client. And you can just say help LSP and this quick start is exactly what you need. It should be noted that at the time of this video, some of these or a lot of the language servers will not 
get automatically installed at this point here. But it'll tell you, hey, sorry, at this time, you're going to have to go do it yourself, which means go out and install whatever that language server is onto your machine. And then once it's on your path, NeoVim will automatically pick it up. But it will go out and grab some like TS server and some other ones. It's pretty straightforward and it's pretty nice. And there are some good tutorials on YouTube from the Primogen and some others that go a little further into that. And I might do that in a future video. For now, I just want you to know that it's here. You can see here that we have text yank post. And this is something that you need NeoVim for. And furthermore, you need NeoVim nightly for. So not work on the stable branch. Now, this is very cool. Now, you may be one of the people, like most of us, you want to see what it is you're copying. You know, you can always go, you know, for... Oh, well, there was a sneak preview right there. With text yank post, when you do something like that, it will show you what you just copied or what you just yanked. And so it kind of gives you that visual cue. There's a lot of people who use Vim and they will go to the trouble of going into visual line just to make sure they have everything and they'll yank and they'll say, okay, oh, I have six lines yanked, fine. And they just saw it and it gave them a visual cue. But it's so nice when you can just use the normal mode stuff and not have to worry about that. But then eh, you're like, did I get that last line? And even with relative numbers here, you know, you're not totally sure. So as you got a sneak preview of before, you can see here that if I go for YY, you see you get that flash of what you just copied. This saves you so much time from having to go into visual line mode and grab stuff because then you really can eyeball it. You go, you know, relative number and then add one to the relative number, which I think a lot of people forget, and that's why they miss the last line, because you need to add one for the line you're on. So this is really nice. I'm trying out different plugins here. This Octo Envim, the maintainer, just posted this on Reddit the other day, and it looks very cool. They're wrapping the GitHub CLI and allowing you to view and edit issues in Vim, and this actually is very cool because you can add reactions and do all kinds of things. Uh, I had it installed, still need to get kind of familiar with it a bit, and uh, I don't think it's fully ready right now, but it has a lot of potential. So be sure to check that out because uh, that's pretty powerful stuff rather than bringing down the markdown to Vim and then changing things and pasting it back up or however you do it. Or if you use a Fire and Vim plugin, I did another video that contains uh, some information on that. Uh, when the other thing is, is that Octo is using this telescope and I am not familiar with that yet. I really like using FZF and I don't think I need another list thing. So we'll see what happens there, whether Octo supports FZF or maybe as a user, I'm able to redirect things to FZF or maybe telescope and FCF will play well, or maybe, you know, maybe all the roads are leading to telescope. So we'll see. But uh, I use FCF for everything, so I can't imagine that's going to be, you know, a replacement for FCF anytime soon, or if it even should be. I'm not sure of all the use cases. Now, here you can see my fun with the LSP stuff. So this is interesting here. That's commented out. Okay. So for Rust Analyzer, I'm using Rust Analyzer, but not through the NVIM language server client. I'm using AL. Same thing for JavaScript and Node. Now for C, I am using it and it works pretty well. However, I'm more or less using a combination of AL with the LSP client and that works pretty well. So I can show you that. Let's just see what this looks like here. You can see there, you'll get non-void function does not return a value. So I'm getting the message here, both from the language server client for NeoVim and from AL. You know, I really don't need both and I really don't know that I care for these inline errors. So for C, these are some of the recommended mappings and a lot of these are very similar 
to the ones that have always been built in and familiar. If you've been using Ale for a while, like I have, you have kind of your own mappings. You see I get this nice pop-up if I do the hover. And then if I did capital D. Oh, okay. Method not found. What was I on? Oh, okay. That This is not... Yeah, this is another thing where not every one of the Vim LSP helper methods is available for every language service. So right here, I don't have the option to do G capital D. I can just comment that out because I can't use it anyway. Go to definition. You can see that, uh, you know, it's pretty powerful. The bottom line here is, should you switch from Vim to NeoVim? And six months ago, I would have said, no, it looks like it's going to become crazy, bloated. I don't know what's going on there. I don't want a whole lot of IDE type stuff. But it seems to be that the NeoVim team and the roadmap and the spirit of the team is that they want to keep Vim Vim and just add some nice goodness like that. Uh, you'll notice, though, that uh, with NeoVim, it's a little snappier in certain areas, too. So startups a little quicker. Usually when you uh, uh, escape from insert mode, it's usually a little quicker, just a little, little snappier with things. And they got rid of some bloat and, you know, you have built in emulator. And you can also write plugins in any language that you want for the most part. And so, you know, you always see Lua and you see VimScript or Vimal, but you can write a node plugin for Vim now and distribute that or just use it yourself. And so that's nice to have that API there. It's up to you if you think that's going too far. It's nice to have these tools available to you to do these things. You know, you don't have to learn Lua. You can just do what you need to do in node to make a plugin. And so overall, I think it's so simple to at least give it a try using the nvim from vim help and then just you know give it a shot you don't like it and then don't use it go back and use vim and you're good to go there's a vim 9 coming and you'll have to decide what you want to do later on if the original vim is no longer maintained or what happens there i'm thinking at some point through some magical ways that neo vim will probably drop the neo and become vim through some magical arbitration or just the uh, natural course of things but we'll see anyway give neo vim a try it can't hurt you you can get familiar with a lot of the new cool stuff or just use your same old stuff and just have a little bit snappier environment and then at least you have all these cool new things available to you you can give them a try thank you for watching be sure to like and subscribe and there'll be more content coming your way soon thanks for watching